Welcome to the Have Good Ripple Effect podcast. Let's jump right in. Hi, and welcome back to the Have Good Ripple Effect podcast. I'm Lisa Even, your host. And today we're talking all about life design. Life design. Hmm. When you, it sounds so fancy. But for me, and for those of you who know, I wrote a book called Joy is My Job. And it's all about creating more joy that if you wait for joy to find you, good luck, because you might wait forever. And I think there's a component to that, that when you choose to make joy your job, you're choosing to design your life a little differently. And today we're going to hit on not just joy, because I think there's more components to it, but we're going to hit on how are you designing your life? Are you letting life happen to you? Or are you happening to it? So let's dive in. I'm going to share some stories and hopefully some strategies, give you some things to think about as you do a little bit of reflecting on your life. But most of all, I hope, I hope that you walk away with a little bit of jet fuel. Sometimes it's easy to look back and be like, gosh, look at all this time that maybe I didn't do the thing or I should have done the thing. I want you to like push that away and I want you to focus on what does the future hold? If we're designing forward, not backwards, what does that look like? Now, if you're like me and you resonate with, I don't know, phrases and you almost tuck them in your pocket, one of my favorite phrases or sayings is you happen to the world, not the other way around. You happen to the world, not the other way around. And I think that that is the permission giver to say, okay, there are so many heavy things in our world, whether it's jobs or life or kids or sickness or money, right? Stress, like all the things that if we, if I gave you a sheet of paper and said, hey, what is weighing on you? What are some hard things in your life? And you might be like, can I have more pieces of paper than one? (laughs) Because some of us on some days, we literally might need six or seven sheets of paper. But if I said to you, okay, Write down all the things that are heavy and you've got them written in front of you. Now let's happen to those things. Like, let's look at those things and think, hmm, what do I want that component of my life to look like? And that's where we're going to focus today is really the design of your life, but the design of your life while life is actually happening versus I had an email that came to me. Um, I was hosting a networking event for college students. And it was so funny. After the event, uh, I had someone that had just recently retired. They came to the event. We're networking with these college students. And in the email afterwards, he's like, hey, thanks for inviting me to come. The future is really bright. And one of his pieces of his advice to the students was, it's great to be ready for the fastball, right? It's great to prepare and to have all of these plans and dreams and all the things in order but be ready for the curveballs, right? Be ready for those things that you don't expect. And I think that life design is a little bit like that. Like we're going to plot out like, gosh, we want to sketch out some of the things that we hope to do or want to do or should do, like the good shoulds, (laughs) as my friend Jill would say. And we're going to take that one step further and just be intentional about how we're spending our time. Now, I'm reading a book right now And it's called Designing Your Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. And I listen to everything on Audible because if you're a busy parent, you know that sitting down to read is like a dream. That would be a dream. But because I'm busy and I've got a lot of things, I listen to it in 15 minute increments in the car while I'm dropping my my kids off at sports or shuffling them from one place to the next. And it's been a really interesting book because it's taken my joy idea, right? Taking one corner of my life and saying, okay, how can I add more joy? They do a great job. And I almost envision it like a teeter-totter of saying, what does your work view and your life view look like? What do you do in like work and what do you do in play? And I encourage you, I'm not all the way through it. So you'll have to send me a message if you read it and we can compare notes. But it's this really neat way of saying that Do you have too much work, but not enough play? And almost that reflective habit of just seeing how in sync you are with your life. Now, for me, I remember that was like the worst day that I can remember, gosh, I don't know, in 
Yeah, in a really long time. We had just made the decision, my husband and I, to move back to Iowa, but we weren't quite ready. So we're living in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and we're like, okay, we know we want to move closer to family. And in order to do that, we need to do the whole like sell the house, find the jobs. The market was really good. And so we thought, okay, let's get our house sold. We'll move into a rental because we really liked our the area that we were living in. We're like, okay, we'll move into a rental somewhere in this neighborhood and then we'll figure out the jobs. And then by summertime, we'll be ready to move back to Iowa. So we're like, okay, let's do it. We sold our house in a day, which was awesome. And we're like patting ourselves on the back, like, good job. You know, you're adulting. And we moved into a really cute little rental house. It was cream colored brick. Like if you've been to Milwaukee, the houses are a hundred years old and some of them are gorgeous. And this was just a really cute brick house. And so we moved in on a Friday and then our friends were hosting a bachelor bachelorette party in Minnesota. So it was kind of like move the stuff in on Friday, Friday night, leave to go to our friends and got back on Sunday. We had picked up our kiddos because my parents were watching them. And, you know, we spent our first official night in the house. And then Monday I went to work and, you know, we stayed the night again. And then on Tuesday, so our third day in the house, I go to work and I worked in a clinic in the side of a hospital. So if you've ever been to the doctor, you know that there are long hallways with exam rooms. And off to the side, there was a bathroom and right, um, right near the exam rooms. A patient had used the restroom, and I promise this will all tie together. <laughs> and you know when you flush the toilet and you have those silver cylinders and you flush it, that came off in their hand, and it just sprayed gallons, like hundreds of gallons of water everywhere. We were on the sixth floor of this building. It is seeping down through the walls, and I'm getting paid. I'm getting phone calls of people saying, hey, where's the water coming from? And I'm like, hi, we're the water. <laughs> we're trying to get it fixed. And I spent most of the day cleaning up water, redirecting people, figuring out, okay, what are the next steps? Because if you've ever had a flood of any sort, you know that water creates mold and all the things. So my mind is just like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do with all of this water? And I got home that night about 6 o'clock p.m. And to the new rental. And my husband's like, hi, how was your day? And he was kind of laughing because he knew my day was like, hi, it wasn't great. <laughs> And as I walk in the uh, front door, I see our kiddos playing hide and seek and tag around these huge stacks of boxes. And our kiddos were little at the time. So, you know, three, four boxes high, I can just barely see a little human and I can hear them more than I can see them running around. And my husband's like, you know, happy anniversary, by the way. I'm like, yeah, thank you. I never forget that day because it was July 11th. And he's like, what do you want to do tonight? And I said, honestly, I just want to move all of the boxes out of the living room, kitchen, dining room, I move them upstairs because there was a third floor where there was like an extra media room and a storage room and a bathroom and a bedroom up there, a uh, big, just kind of square brick house. And I just want to move everything upstairs. And then this weekend I can sort it all. And so my husband's like, didn't you clean up water all week? And I was like, you know, I did. I cleaned up a lot of water, but I feel like this is one of the things that's in my control. So let's get this stuff moved out of here. So we spent most of the night, we ordered pizza, drank some wine, moved all of our boxes upstairs. And I remember laying in bed thinking, tomorrow will be better. Yeah, tomorrow will be better. Like flood at work. That's definitely one for the record books. <laughs> and about 3 a.m., we it started raining and we had a rainstorm. And the rainstorm th turned more into like a thunderstorm and then we could hear you know the thunder and lightning and then all of a sudden a lightning bolt actually strikes our house and if you've ever been in a building when where like lightning strikes it sounds like a bomb has just gone off we're looking out the windows thinking like maybe a transformer blew so we're like peeking out like gosh i hope they're okay out there and we our, my husband's like, you know, maybe I should just check the breaker, like check to make sure our electricity and everything is good. And I was like, oh, that's a great point. Right. Third night in the house. And he goes downstairs and I said, well, maybe I'll go upstairs because I think 
you know, maybe some of those boxes that we moved up there tipped over. So I go to the third floor. I'm looking around. The We realized as we were starting to head, like me upstairs, him downstairs, that our overhead lights were not working, but our nightlight, like in the outlet, in the hallway, it was. So we're like, gosh, something tripped. Uh, so when I got up to the third floor, there was no like overhead light. So I was just using my flashlight, kind of peeking around. Didn't smell anything, didn't see anything. I mean, it smelled a little bit like attic, but came back down to the main floor. And then by that time, my husband had gotten to the basement and he flipped the breaker and all of our outlets just started to go. Zzz, and I was like, oh, geez, you know, I've never seen that. <laughs> so I call him. Thankfully, he, ha he had his cell phone because he was using it as a flashlight. And I said, hey, something's not right. Turn that off. And he's like, OK. So we meet on the main floor and we're just kind of looking at each other like, huh, this is just just weird enough. Right. And we're like, well, maybe we should call the fire department and have them come take a look. Just basically bless the electricity and say, like, you're fine. Someone will be here in the morning. We're good to go. And our kiddos are like peeking out of their doors like, what's going on? And so we have them put their shoes on and then we run in the pouring rain. We get in the van and we're idling right outside of the house. And then a fire truck pulls up and a, one firefighter gets out and he's kind of like coming to the sidewalk in his gear, kind of like, why am I here? You could just kind of see it in his, like the way that he walked of just like, hi, it's 3 a.m. And, you know, there was really nothing to see at that point. My husband, I could see him standing in the pouring rain talking to the fire firemen a couple more fire trucks pull up behind me so we're all just kind of idling and then the fireman goes in and a minute or two later they start pulling axes and hoses and ladders off these trucks like they're putting the legs of the truck out and my son's like mom this is so cool and a little part of me was like yeah not <laughs> so I drive away and we had one relative who lived in Milwaukee at the time and I called her I'm like hi we're having an FIRE can I come to your house? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> so the kids and I went to her house and my husband stood under our next new, brand new next door neighbor's awning. And I start, you know, giving him a call and he's not answering. And I think, okay, he probably can't hear it. It's loud, raining. They've got lights all flashing, whatever. And so by this point, it's like four in the morning. We lay, I lay the kids down at my aunt's house and then about an hour and a half, two hours later, they're bouncing off the walls. And I think, OK, you know what? We're just going to go to daycare like nothing happened. We're you know, going to act like this is totally <laughs> normal. And I drop the kiddos off at daycare and I head back over to the house. My husband had texted a few times, but hadn't really talked to me about what was going on. I pull up to the house from the front because it's mostly brick. It looked pretty decent. And I get to the front of the house. My husband meets me and he's like, you know how we moved all of that, all the boxes upstairs? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, yeah. Kind of like this sad, like, yeah. And I'm like, oh. And it's dawning on me, like all the things that got moved upstairs, that's probably where the fire was. The fire inspector comes over and he's like, hi, before I can leave, we just need to know what company you want to use to board up the windows that we need to make sure that's arranged prior to our leaving. And I was like, right, there would be companies that do that. There are companies that come and board up windows. Right. OK, so he, I'm like, do you have a list? You know, thinking to myself, I, I don't know what these which company to use because I've never thought about these companies even existing. And he hands me a sheet of paper and I'm like, thanks. And he, you know, walks away. And then it hits me. I'm like, oh, we have a landlord again. It's been like three days. We don't own this structure. So I need to call Todd, our landlord, and be like, hi, Todd. You know, interesting night. I had a fire. Lots of, uh, you know, dormers kicked in and windows broken and water everywhere. And I'm thinking to myself, like, we're not living here anymore. And I had recently gone to a conference. And that's really today's strategy when I, I think about a couple of them. But something that I just want you to think about if you Google circle of influence or circle of control, it will pop up many, many different images. But it's my favorite by far because the way that it says to think about your life, and I'll give you the Lisa version. I mean, you could probably read some awesome psychology magazines and get like excellent data. But for me, the circle of control, it's basically like three circles, much like if you're watching on the screen, like a ripple where you've got the center circle and then another ring and another ring, kind of like the target uh, symbol. 
And in the center circle, that's you. And it's what you can, you know, the only things you can control in your whole life are the circle, are in the circle, are the things that you do and say, right? Like there are all sorts of things happening around you, much like the fire. But my only thing that I can control is my reaction to it. And I had just recently seen that at a conference because they say, you know, circle, the middle circle is what you do and say. That's all you can control. That second circle are the things that you can influence. Like you are going to do some things or say some things to influence the outcome. But good luck. Things like my kids productivity, you know, productivity at work, other people's thoughts. Like you can't make someone think something, but you can influence it. It's all of the things that, you know, we wish we could control, but we can't. Even my child's future. My mom always said to me growing up, be good and be careful. Right. She said it a thousand times. She still even says it. Or sometimes she'll even text message that to me. And I think about that was her way of influencing me. Now, I do the same thing with my kids, but I've added a layer and I say, be good, be careful. And then they say, be nice. And on the way to the school every morning, you know, they're on their little scooters and their backpacks. And I'm like, be good, be careful. I think like, okay, if I tell you this 3000 times, you'll remember, like you'll remember and you'll do it. Now, that third circle is the circle of concern. And those are the things that you want to have on your radar, but good luck trying to control them. Weather, hence our fire, you know, traffic, death, like all the things that are really far outside of your control. They feel even far away. Yeah, that third circle are things that you can be concerned about, but it's almost like don't spend a ridiculous amount of time either thinking or worrying about it because it just is. So most often, if I have something going on, I decide, okay, what do I want to say and what do I want to do? And it had been, you know, a week or two before uh, the fire that I had attended a conference and heard and had heard about this concept. And I tell you what, it probably saved me a literally two years of agony. And what I mean by that is if you've ever had a natural disaster, you know, it took us six or seven days to clear the place out. We, thankfully, our insurance covered the cost of being able to clean anything that did survive. So anything that smelled like smoke, uh, had water damage, but wasn't ruined, you know, had just gotten wet. They took all of our belongings to a warehouse and cleaned it. And I had remember thinking like, oh, you know, we'll get some of this back. Like 30 days is what I was like thinking. And the guy looks at me. He's like, "Eh, more like 120. And in my mind, I'm like, July, August, September, October. October. And I think we got our our stuff back like October 17th or something like that. So it was truly like four months of camping. We li- we rented an apartment not far from the firehouse is what we call it. <laughs> and it became, we told our kids, kids were camping in an apartment for a few months. So for a really long time, if you asked my kids if they liked camping, they're like, yeah, we love it. Little did they know it was apartment camping. But That circle of influence, I think, is just a key in knowing, okay, you happen to the world, not the other way around. And when you think about designing your life to really be including all of the things that you love, I would encourage you, number one, to believe that you happen to the world, not the other way around. And number two, start a list. Get a list of, you know, I've done the list of like 100 things I love, I can usually get into the 50s of like, I love cheesecake. I love my family, (laughs) right? Like if you've ever done that exercise, it feels like you're like, it's going to be so easy. And then you start writing down the things that you love and you're like, actually, this is really hard. The other thing that we did when we started to design our lives was we made a things that matter list. And so it's like family and friends and fun and food. We love food. And so oftentimes when we're thinking about designing our lives, we say, does it hit all our things that matter list? Because if it's something that we're spending time on, we want it to matter. And the last thing I'll say for you and just something to chew on today is think about how you can infuse that into your lives. Like look at your calendar and say, hey, I really, health matters to me. Maybe I haven't exercised in forever or maybe nutrition matters, but I haven't done it in a while. And just start adding a little bit of it back. Now, it can be a tiny, tiny little droplet of time, but you will be shocked when you start designing your life to realize 
wow, I actually have a lot more power and a lot more control over what I do and say and spend time on than I really think. Now, in future episodes, we're going to talk all about how to do it, right? This was just the cliff note version of me saying like, hi, you should design your life, like create fun and fun and amazing things. But in future episodes, we'll actually talk a little bit more deeply about what does that look like this month and next month? Like, how do you get activated in it? But if anything, I'm going to leave an opt-in for you to grab, like a worksheet for you to grab of just a checklist of things of like, hmm, how is this going? How is that going? You can download that. I'll put it in the show notes. And if you liked our conversation today, again, scratching the surface of life design, be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. Share with a friend. If you want to do this with someone else, that's like, I would say like, do it together because you'll be more likely to succeed when you have accountability friend along the way. And lastly, if you could do me the favor, leave a review, let other people know what you're going to get, what you're going to hear, stories and strategies, hopefully authentic real life. That's what I hope that you hear when you listen and we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. Visit lisaeven.com to learn about events and grab a copy of my book, Joy is My Job.